This is a special edition of FinScale, a podcast created by Solen Niederkorn, shedding light on innovation in finance, banking, and insurance. Special edition Money 2020 in collaboration with the Payment Association EU. As a media partner covering the Money 2020 event, I teamed up with the Payment Association EU to bring you a series of captivating interviews. Get ready to dive into the world of payments and discover remarkable companies across different separate episodes. Gain valuable insights into their operations, their collaboration with the ecosystem and their expectation from even like Money 2020. Enjoy the show! Livia Benisti, Chief Business Officer at Banking Circle. Hi, everyone. Hi, Livia. Hi. Great to see you at Money 2020. Great to be here. <laughs> it's very challenging, I must admit, uh, for the audience. It's very challenging to, you know, find the people at the right time, but you were on time. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> You're welcome. It is a bit crazy. I thought I would have more time to listen and meet different people, and, and suddenly the days got away with me. So many people know banking circle like this, but people sometimes m make confusion with circle or other company in the space. So I would be interested that we start with this short presentation. Of, I mean, what is banking school? What are you doing? Where are you based? And, you know, I mean, snapshot of the sure, company. Sure, no problem. So Banking Circle is a fully licensed credit institution. We are a bank and we service fintechs and other financial institutions. And at our core, we offer them payments, accounts and FX. So okay. that's it at its simplest. We're regulated out of Luxembourg. We have offices all over Europe and, and beyond that as well. So we essentially provide fintechs and banks with those services that I mentioned in order to enable them to service the needs of their clients who may be merchants or other consumers. Okay. And the company has been created in the UK? We were created out of a Danish bank. or That's what I was thinking. Yeah. It's not based in the UK. No. So I mean, founders, it's based in the UK, but not from the UK. So actually, we were found, our founders are Danish and they were, one of them came out of Saxo Bank um, and we were originally Saxo Payments. Oh, okay. But our banking license is in Luxembourg. So that is our headquarters. That is where the bank is based. We do have teams across Denmark, Luxembourg and London. In London, we have our AML teams. We have um, a lot of our sales guys. Denmark tends to be more our tech team, predominantly our tech team. Um, but we are a, a Luxembourg licensed bank with our control functions, our governance, our headquarters, our management sits in Luxembourg. And we also have sales teams ba based elsewhere as well. We have an office in Singapore, an office in Australia. Okay, so world-based. We are very much a global <laughs> bank, yeah. Okay, so you, you mentioned a few of your uh, clients, which are, I mean, from different uh, verticals in the finance industry. I would be interested that, that we go deeper and understand the needs that you're solving for your clients. Yeah, absolutely. Moving money around the world is not as easy as I think some people might think it is. Those that are involved will understand that there is, there is friction, often in the form of delays or high costs or lack of transparency. The main reason for that is actually doing cross-border payments involves a few select institutions that have direct access to clearing to the world's central banks and other banks or financial institutions are hooked on to those direct clearers. So as soon as you introduce intermediaries into that process, you inevitably end up with delays and additional costs because at each layer of that, you end up with people charging you for something. Mm -hmm. So... Although payments is beginning to look very digital and very instant and very modern, behind the scenes is still quite an archaic process. And that's something that we're really trying to rectify. So we'll go direct um, as often as we can. And we've built a series of Nostra accounts globally to enable our clients uh, as direct and real-time access as they can get. So clients are only from the financial world? Our clients at the bank, yes, they are regulated financial institutions. That could be PSPs, acquirers or other banks. We are the one with the banking license and therefore we are absolutely liable for the funds that we hold and the money that we transmit. So whilst there are checks involved, we don't go and do KYC on our underlying clients' customers. That would be called KYCC and there is a big issue in the industry with lots of people not knowing exactly where the line stands and we don't, we don't want to have to do KYCC. That would probably bring the financial ecosystem to a halt if every bank was, <laughs> was doing that end due diligence. So we need to do 
appropriate and proper due diligence on our customers to ensure that they have the right controls in place. But ultimately, we are responsible for the money that passes through our accounts and, and the money we hold on deposit. So there's still a responsibility and a liability there. Okay. And if we focus more on the, on the products that you propose, your solutions that you propose to your clients, which one are the most uh, it, I mean, interesting? And interestingly, I really wonder how those clients hear about your solution because it's, it's very technical. It is quite technical, but it's also at its at its simplest form is, is an account. It's, a, it's account payments and FX, right? Yeah. It's, it's very basic. It's, yeah. it's actually quite a basic fundamental product. What we layer on top of that is where it gets really interesting. But we're a bank offering very kind of the basic services in that sense. And then we layer on top of it additional functionality. And we do it with better technology that isn't legacy, that is faster and, and, and cloud-based, etc with access via an API. So it's really how you access it, what we layer on top of it, and the underlying technology that we use. But at its core, it's accounts, payments, FX, and what you can, as I, as I mentioned, what you can build on top of that. Fintechs and PSPs in the market are currently faced with the legacy institutions and trying to back, get a bank account there, uh, which I'm sure, as you'll know, can be lengthy if you're considered at all. And with massive de-risking going on in the industry, which has been the case since you know, over a decade getting a bank account as a fintech or a PSP can be incredibly tricky. And often that's because the legacy setup combined with, well, the cost of, of onboarding and conducting that due diligence for more legacy institutional firms or incumbents is, is much higher than what we can do it for. Um, and it would be a lot slower. For us, we can do things faster with as high, if not a higher amount of due diligence and focus because we really have the technology and the people skills to do that. Mm -mm. So we are known for our ability to do things quickly, to be able to do it faster, to provide the transparency that's needed to do it via an API or a client portal and just be a much more modern version mm -mm. of what's there. On top of that, the, the products that we're looking at at the moment and that we've definitely been talking about at Money 2020, there's a few. So um, Banking Circle really pay in pioneered, excuse me, the use of virtual accounts and Vibands, but that's evolving. So now we are talking very much about our agency banking product where clients can essentially have indirect access to separate credit transfers using their own BICs. So they show up as the financial institution in the payment, which provides transparency, mm -hmm. which doesn't always happen. Sometimes you'll see the kind of the correspondent, if you like, as the financial institution, even though the end client is actually that of, of our customer. So now you will see our customer's name and they hold the BIC. That's, that's one such evolution of, of, of a traditional product, if you like. We also now have re real time on Euro and GBP. We just went live on faster payments so we can have that direct connectivity um, and that instant payment functionality. We are expanding our FX capability. And we're also um, now taking deposits. We, we launched deposit accounts. So As a bank, we're obviously held to, to higher standards, ensuring funds are safe and secure. So we now have a deposit account product and a money market fund where funds can be held in either a bankruptcy remote structure or with AAA rated funds um, where counterparty risk can be diversified with investment grade banks. So that's, that's another thing that we're now talking about at Money 2020. You didn't re uh, really um, answer completely my question because I was interested to know a bit more about your products, but also to go to market strategy because when it comes to B2B, I mean, payments, transaction, forex transaction, it really becomes more complex and, and more complicated. What is your current go-to-market strategy to touch, like, for instance, Pipro or Checkout.com, which are your clients? Current they clients? Are. It's they on your website. Are. They are our clients, yes. <laughs> so how did, do they hear about you? I mean, we started, one of our earlier clients was Stripe. So a huge name. And, and it is not a large ecosystem. So once people do hear of you as being an option and a supplier to names like Stripe, like Pipro, like Checkout, it spreads very fast. So it's not actually a huge ecosystem. There aren't a lot of people that can offer the functionality that we can. In fact, I would argue there's, there's not, not many at all other than the legacy institutions. And they aren't usually taking on a lot of customers. And as I mentioned, it takes a long time. So we come to events like Money 2020, where we are kind of front and center and meeting a lot of clients, a lot of potential clients. And we 
conduct webinars and we put our, our kind of expertise out there. But largely, I think it is word of mouth within the industry as to the service that people are receiving and the kind of functionality that we can offer. Okay. You mentioned Luxembourg. You know, I'm from Luxembourg. Or you maybe I you didn't don't know. know. <laughs> okay, so I'm from Luxembourg. So I was interested to know more because it's a country uh, well known for funds, uh, less for payments, but we have huge actors such as Amazon Pay, Alipay, mm -hmm. and you also in that area. So why do you know, maybe, maybe you were not present in Luxembourg when, when it, it, it was open, but do you know why the, the company chose Luxembourg as its uh, headquarter for Europe? Yeah, I do. I mean, firstly, we needed to be within the Eurozone, right? So Denmark, which is where the founders were from, was not, not within the Eurozone. So that eliminates that straight away. But when you're looking for a headquarter within Europe, you really want a strong regulator that is business friendly not not to imply that it's not not to imply you, they encourage business at the expense of controls at all but that is pro business and understands the need for innovation uh, and for businesses to thrive combined with a strong regulator and with a well respected financial system and for us that was Luxembourg okay. um, there's also great connectivity we were always going to have an office in London obviously we still have our tech team in Denmark you can get to both within an hour really is in the center of Europe. The connectivity is great, but predominantly a strong regulator and a good business environment were absolutely key for us. Okay. Last question. The kind of relationship you have with the uh, payment association in EU, because Banking Circle was one of the first member of this associa association, so it's a historic member. What, uh, what are you looking for when, when you join that kind of association and, and what are the benefits of it? A huge benefit is being able to talk to peers to um, fellow institutions within the market understand their experiences as well. I think that often you can problem solve together and work out what's actually going on, where, where have you managed to deal with certain issues, what are you seeing in the market, what are clients needing, what are they asking for. Really that network and that, that community, as well as the exposure that they're able to offer us, the expertise they're able to offer us, their thought processes, their Um, the conferences, the, the people that they bring together. It's a really unique opportunity to meet with people of that caliber. Thank you very much, Livia. Bye. Okay, bye. Thank you all for listening and sharing this moment with us. Don't hesitate to contact me on Twitter or LinkedIn to share your comments and reactions. You can also rate this episode on your favorite podcast platform. See you soon. <laughs>